That melody that you just heard was from a song called Something Beautiful by Tori Kelly and if you know Matthias Asado you know that he is in the Tori Kelly band. Now the title is ironic because I agree I think this melody is something beautiful and it really demonstrates the possibilities and the potential that you can achieve with drop two chords. I really love Matthias' approach to this and the goal of this video is not only to show you how to play what I played at the intro but hopefully open your mind a bit so that you're able to use drop two chords yourself in your own playing. So let's analyze that progression that I played at the beginning of the video and before we do I need you to make sure you're relatively familiar with your drop two chords and that you also understand how to find the relative minor and major of any chord. So the progression that I played at the beginning is actually derived from just three chords. We have a D minor into a G, A and then another A. That's it. But for the sake of understanding drop two chords a bit more, let's translate those into seventh chords. So we have a D minor seven, a G dominant seven, into an A major seven. So let me play the melody section by section and then I'm gonna explain how I built those chords from the original chords. So the first part sounds like this. So our first chord is from a D minor seven and that is simply a first inversion of your D minor seven chord. But rather than playing the F note on the root there, we're gonna change that for the D. Now for the next chord, it's exactly the same thing, but up two frets. Now that chord of course comes from your G major and the relative minor of G major would be E minor seven. And then the first inversion would be there. But again, we're just changing that root note, which is a G onto an E. And there's no particular reason for that one because the E doesn't really reflect the chord. However, just for consistency and ease, it's just easier to do the same thing. And then for the very last chord, we're just highlighting our A major with a groovy little melody. The next section sounds a little bit like this. So what I get there is basically a first inversion of an F major seven, and that F major seven comes from the D minor seven. So we've gone from D minor seven to F major seven, which is its relative major, and then F major seven to the first inversion. And then we're changing that root note, which is an A, for a D, because ultimately we're highlighting a D minor seven chord. So it's kind of almost a combination of your D minor seven and your F major seven. And then for our next chord we have, now that chord there is the first inversion of E minor seven, which originally comes from our G, because E minor is the relative minor of G. So we've gone from there to there to there. So add a little hammer on on the bottom, and then go to a simple G major triad here. Now I'm gonna do the same kind of thing, but two frets up, and that highlights our G flat minor, which originally comes from A. So we've gone from A to its relative minor, and then the first inversion, followed by, which is just two simple major triad inversions of A. And then on the very end, we're gonna add another hammer on on the ninth interval. And just do a little phrasing there on the end. Now we're halfway there, hopefully you're doing your best to follow along so far. Now the next chord section sounds like this. So the first chord is just a simple D minor triad. With a little extra few notes on the end there. Followed by your G dominant seven. Hammering on those two fingers there. Adding a little melody on the end there. Then our last chord. Now that there, 
is a first inversion of A major 7. And seeing as we have the open A string 3, it's a great opportunity to use it since it's highlighting an A chord ultimately. And the next little melody is kind of a G flat minor pentatonic shape here. And there's two ways you could look at that. You could see that melody as the relative minor position of A, or all of those notes are actually in the A major pentatonic. But the shape itself is kind of a typical G minor pentatonic descent. And the very last chord section sounds like this. And all we have there is a D minor triad with your ninth interval and then that's an F major triad, which is the relative major of that D, so that's kind of in the same bar, and then follows, which we mentioned earlier, so that's your first inversion of E minor 7, which comes from your G, so we've gone from G, E minor 7, first inversion, and then gone back to your G, simple G major triad, and then we finish on an A major chord. So I'm going to play the whole thing slow and I'm going to annotate on screen here where each of these chords originally come from. So here we go. So that's all for today, hopefully you managed to follow along with this video and like I said at the beginning, the idea of this video was to kind of open your mind a bit more to drop two chords and the importance and the potential of them. So hopefully you at least took some inspiration from drop two chords to include them in your own playing. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.